ETH, I think, has a very good battleground set for it this year in terms of like its competitiveness, and I think it'll do pretty good, assuming that the Dengkun upgrade goes unhitched. And there's a lot of like potential upside for it, seeing how the ETF is also around the corner. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say on this podcast right now, ETH will not break $6,500, in my opinion, this bull run. If it does, I'll say on this podcast, I was wrong. <laughs> Welcome back to your favorite crypto podcast. Sometimes crypto. The unscripted. Crypto podcast. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. We are in person. We're live. We're live. No, we're not doing the... The, what's it called the virtual virtual podcast not thing? yet anyways not 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 this time hopefully not for for a little while just because uh i can't stand to be away from william i can't wait for it to be away from him for a little <laughs> bit i think this is what do us good he was gone for four years it was the happiest four years i've ever had in my life <laughs> i hope to return the favor yeah well useless william it was three years so it's like you're gone for longer oh man you see, you miss me so much. It felt like it was Jesus. forever. <laughs> so there's a lot of news this week. Yep, that's exactly what I was gonna say. There Which there, it'll probably be old news by by the time this is out a little bit. By Thursday, a little old. Just a little bit. Yeah, a little old. Just a bit, a tad bit. All but, right. But uh, then again, uh, we're always trying to get new followers, new subscribers, and uh, if you're hearing this, and it might be new to you, so uh, if you're here, smash that like button subscribe send out comments tell us tell it let everyone know let william know how good looking he is right now yeah just like that exactly <laughs> one day i'm gonna get flamed for this <laughs> i don't mind just have to eat those comments they're, they're, the internet is nasty the internet is nasty but i promise you they will all right okay let's let's get into it let's get into it we got a lot of news to cover. Where do you want to start? That's a good question. Um, I, I guess the the shortest news first, and then to, to just to like, I guess what's short since you said short. Well, news. Monday earlier this week. Yesterday. Uh, yesterday, yeah. But by the time this comes out, it's just Monday. I'm just gonna say earlier this week, William. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, one of our favorite presidents got reelected. Anyway, Is he our favorite? I only know one thing about I, him, I so say, I can't say. I that. say one of our, but that's the, the William. The reason why I say that is because of that one factor. That one thing that you know already puts him above others. I'm not saying he's the best. I'm not saying that he's he is my favorite or I like he strongly endorse him. But because he supports Bitcoin, I think he has uh, just added added points to him initially. Bukele has been announced president again in El Salvador. Naib Bukele. So, I know more about Javier Malay than I do the president of El Salvador. I want to be clear on this. Oh, really? Hundred <laughs> percent. Well. I only know one political stance he has, which is he likes Bitcoin. He put a Bitcoin mine on a volcano for energy. Well, he hasn't done that yet. Oh, he, no? He just issued bonds so that people could, so they can invest into that. Never mind. And those bonds will be paid out in Bitcoin also. Never mind. If you choose to. Um, uh, another big thing that he, like he's mostly known for, for the non, no coiners, um, is uh, how strict he is with uh, cr- uh, crime over there. Didn't wasn't there like a little crime spree like a couple weeks back or something? That or was what? in El Salvador. That was a, a neighboring country. Yeah, it was a neighboring country. My yeah, fault. yeah. Um, but uh, America is no longer the the country with the most uh, imprisoned people, mostly because of that guy. Uh, he he locked. El Salvador. Uh, yeah. El Salvador got the title now. Yeah. Are you the, sure about that? Yeah. He got the largest prison. Uh, but he has the most prison people in prison uh i don't know what i don't know for a fact is if it's quantity like by actual numbers or if it's ratio by a population size it's probably ratio but he's definitely has the world's largest prison and um el salvador is the one with the most uh uh with that highest uh like number now now that you bring it up ratio and total prisoners it can make a huge difference seeing how the size of population is significantly different but Countries yeah. with the world's largest number of prisoners as of December 2023 in the thousands. Sir, El Salvador is not even a top four. Okay, so it's not it's not in the it's not by actual population, it's by ratio. US has one thousand hundred and sixty seven. So that's like what one million million, right? 
then China, then Brazil, then India. Yeah, it's not by population; it's by it's by ratio. Yeah. Um, we just want to clear clear out. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, that, that is a very important uh, distinct distinguishing factor. But yeah, that's how the non coiners know him. Um, but he's pro Bitcoin and he got elected again, uh, like 80, 80 some percent. So yeah, that's the quick news. I don't know. If we talked about it at any of the other podcasts, but um, Argentina took away the crypto capital gains tax. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we covered that. Uh, I don't think so because he dropped like from ten. If you did it early to five percent, whether ten to fifteen, he's like, we'll just get rid of it. No taxes for you guys. Okay. So no capital gains tax for any crypto earnings, or is it for de- declaring one of those Bitcoin. two Bitcoin specifically. Yeah. 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 He said Bitcoin. it's. I read Bitcoin. Another good country to be in for. Uh, Lower low taxes is um, I say country, but um, Puerto Rico. That's a state. That's a it's a territory. Yes, but it's a country. I think both. I, yeah, both. It's a U.S. territory and a standalone country. Yep. Uh, a lot of people go to Puerto Rico for tax incentives, but Argentina doing that. Uh, that's good news for anyone who's invested in Bitcoin, or cryptocurrencies. Pro moving forward, moving forward. Yeah. Uh, we got some other small news. It's pretty good in terms of uh, adoption. Uh, we have a new partnership on the block between GoDaddy and ENS. ENS being uh, Ethereum Name Services. Yeah. So uh, it's gonna. It's gonna significantly increase the amount of people who will have access to, like, just being onboarded onto the Ethereum blockchain, and uh, that's just exciting news, because the more people using crypto, uh, the more development that we get to see, the more applications, and the faster we get to a world where uh, we will have no banks. If that's a good thing or not, I think, I think it's safe to assume that. Well, I don't. I don't. I can't say if it's good or bad. When you you, can, you can't say if no because it no. Why? I'm not saying banks are hundred percent safe, but they are backed by big governments who just print the money and they just cover losses. We don't have that in crypto. You slip up, your money's gone. Correct. Yeah. So the the like at a personal level, it is riskier because you yeah. are you are more as a societal societal level yeah I think it is it correct is. yeah it's like kind of like a spectrum depending on where you want to sit um but then again we'll just probably see institute like banks will probably evolve you'll see a mix yeah i was gonna say i forgot what we were talking about uh you said ens ens and ethereum name service and godaddy a big domain host hoster yeah so they pretty much have websites uh people yeah 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 mm-hmm. no, i don't remember what i was gonna say yeah, so it's gonna make the anyone who is registered with GoDaddy, uh, they're just pretty much gonna implement more services to the GoDaddy websites where you're gonna add it will be ENS easier titles to it exactly, and, and to accept like set up wallets and stuff to accept payments. What's already on me set up? Huh? If you have an ENS, a wad's already attached to yes, it. Yes, that's that's the beautiful part about it. It's like since you get an ENS server, you get your your ENS domain. Um, you could immediately start accepting cryptos on the Ethereum blockchain through yeah. that. Uh, essentially, ENS um, is like the Web 3.0 version of the DNS, which is a, a protocol that pretty much runs Web 2.0, uh, our internet, uh, which stands for Domain Name Server Service, uh, where it pretty much changes the IP addresses that you would use to search up uh, websites. So binary information that no one really knows to something like Amazon.com or Google.com. Yeah. Or so it makes it, it makes it more human readable. Whenever you're using Ethereum name service ENS, um, it's supposed to be replacing the long uh, a wallet address that's a mix of numbers and letters that's kind of hard to memorize to something that's more easy to memorize, like William.eth or Alex.eth. You said more easy, easier. Okay. I'll take note. <laughs> I'm trying to correct my grammar now. <laughs> it just sounds I think, pretty. I think uh, easier does sound pretty, prettier, but more easy is grammatically correct. Let me know. Let me know if I don't think it is. 
Write in the comments. We're not getting into this right now. <laughs> okay. What? It's not worth it. Yeah, true that. True that. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that little integration that they're going to do. One step further. One step further. I mean, aside from the fact that we might be seeing an Ethereum uh, ETF on the way. That's in May. In May. Yeah. Post happening. Oh, yeah, for sure. Post happening. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because they're going to... Uh, happening except for April. SEC is going to do the same thing they did with the BTC. Well, no, no. Their last date is May. Yeah, they're, but they're going to push it out to the very last date. Yeah. Of course. The week before. Yeah. Okay, approved. And Bitcoin ETF is approximately April 20th. What? Yeah. I mean, not ETF, my bad. Bitcoin happening. I apologize. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. The only thing is, we are you. You will see the same thing that happened with oh, the Bitcoin well, ETF. With for the sure, some liquidation. Yeah, Grayscale. Oh, okay. The largest holder of ETH. Yeah. Well, ETH has a lot of big things coming. Besides the fact that ETF is around the corner, they're partnering up. Well, ENS. It's not particularly ETH, but it is ETH based. Uh, yeah. Uh, ENS partnering up with GoDaddy. Um, Link on a ripper. Yeah, uh, ETH has a major update coming. Uh, I think we briefly mentioned it before. Mm-hmm. It's called a Dankun update. Uh, they ha- there's no official date on it yet, but there is something big coming up this weekend. Their final test net. Their final test net um, is going to be uh, onboarding the the new update. It's the Holesky test net that's going to be getting the 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 upgrade which i think if everything goes good it, it gets automatically updated to a new one no so what they're going to do is um on saturday they're updating the the Hel- Hel- haleski mm-hmm. testnet and then the very next day uh, the eth developers are going to get on a call and they're going to decide what date to bring it on to main chain yeah mm-hmm. that doesn't sound too decentralized to me well they're all the developers pretty much run nodes they own a bunch of nodes um <laughs> One thing that I learned actually was how they came up with the name Dankun because I was about to roast that name. I'm glad you brought that up. How yeah. they come up with Dankun? So, um, it's like a mixture of two different words. Um, Dank and Kun? No, uh, <laughs> Deneb and Kankun. What? Now, where they get Deneb and Kankun from, right? Well, I can see where they got Kankun from. I can't yeah, see the other city. One. Okay, cool. So, Deneb is the name of a star. And apparently all of the, so Denkun upgrade is uh, upgrading two specific layers uh, of the ETH blockchain, mm-hmm. the consensus layer and the execution layer. Yeah, and making fees lower for layer twos. Exactly. So the Deneb, um, all, the ex- all the consensus layer updates are named after stars. Uh, start with Altair, Bellatrix, Capella, and Deneb. So they go in alphabetical order. Okay. And then the very next one after this upgrade, uh, the next consensus layer upgrade would be called Electra. Uh, and then all the execution layer up- upgrades are named after cities that have hosted uh, DevCon. Uh, examples would be Shanghai, Cancun, uh, Bogota, and London. So they just merge the two. Uh, Den Deneb for Den and then Cancun Kun so Den Kun. That's how they got the name. Say so they're at least somewhat creative. Yeah. Well, apparently there was like the other the other one they did the same thing with the the name uh, Shanghai upgrade right, but then they portmanteaued it with uh, Capella, the previous execution uh, consensus layer, mm-hmm. and they call it Chapella. I never heard that. Yeah, that's that's. It's I always heard, we always heard the Shanghai, Shanghai because that the, that that specific upgrade was for the execution layer. Oh, just the execution. Yeah, layer. gotcha. But yeah, uh, the the upgrade is set to to Im- implement nine different uh, Ethereum improvement proposals, mm-hmm. and it should come out uh, by sometime the first quarter if everything goes good this weekend. Gotcha. Yeah. The nine improvement proposals are pretty hardcore. Um, I wrote them down. And I'm also add a link in the description for you guys to check it out. Uh, EIP 1153. Mm-hmm. Uh, the purpose of this is to 
discard data for each transaction so that information isn't just being stored on chain. Uh, EIP 4788, uh, which uses uh, the beacon chain blocks to create a new Oracle. That way, uh, Ethereum doesn't need to use third party Oracles anymore. EIP 5656 updates the memory copying and lowers gas fees by, by doing that. Uh, EIP 6780, so total of nine, remember. Uh, EIP 6780. Uh, which will change a smart contract feature called self destruct, mm -hmm. and it should make it more. It should make the chain more stable overall. EIP seven seven zero four four seven zero four five seven five one four. They all kind of have like their own like specific function, but overall they improve node oper operations and make uh, validator management and, and efficiency uh, better. EIP 7516 lets smart contracts uh, access uh, a base fee for something called blobs. It's a new thing. I'll cover it now. <laughs> and then right. uh, the the bigger one is 4844, which uh, kind of like uh, implements the blobs and uh, allows for blob sharing across uh, transactions. So what is a blob? A blob. I may ask, yes. Right? <laughs> A blob is something called a uh, binary large objects. Okay. Uh, hence, blobs binary large objects, right? Um, and it's just one of the steps that uh, the Ethereum developers need to take to get closer towards sharding, which overall should decrease transaction fees and improve transaction times. Um, right for ETH. For ETH. For ETH. But right now, all these are only going to be mostly affecting because they're not implementing sharding yet. They're implementing something called a uh, proto dank sharding. Mm -hmm. What the end goal would be is dank sharding. Um, proto dank sharding comes from two uh, ETH developers that are their proto and dank is part of their names. Um, but the I don't know his actual name, but the dank oh, dude, fine. the dank dude. Um, He's the one who who originally uh, proposed the idea for sharding. Okay. And now Proto is just like the like the first step towards that. He's like, okay, this guy Proto, he's like, let's try to figure it out, and that's this is what they're doing. So this binary large objects thing is gonna let uh, off date off chain data be stored uh, two blocks by attaching a hash on on the blocks. Okay. And uh, this is just a new form of data that uh, wasn't previously implemented on, on Ethereum. It's apparently really big for, for the chain and should dramatically, drastically mm -hmm. uh, improve layer twos. So ETH gas fees, not going to really see a big difference. It's going to stay high and... It's, so, it's more so network fees on layer twos. For sure, absolutely. But like, I'm talking big changes to, to layer twos. Um, they're expecting anywhere from 10 to 100 times cheaper g gas fees for layer twos, which is more more comparable to Solana. Uh -huh. and, then also, and then also 45 <laughs> to 100 times faster transactions. And currently. Yeah, on layer twos. But that's just huge numbers. Like 10, like if you hear 10x, 10x is a lot, but then up to 100x is ridiculous. ridiculous. So that's just a overall good news um, for for ETH, assuming that everything goes good on this new uh, implementation for the Haleski uh, testnet. Because apparently they had issues for for the testnet prior to that. Uh, Sepolia, Sepolia, they mm -hmm. they had like a like a four hour issue where it wasn't working. They were able to fix it the same day and got it launching. So. Very minimal effects towards ETH price. Yeah, Solana had the same problem too. What what problem? <laughs> what are you referring to, William? Solana had its first outage within like a year. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. You could really, you could really feel the, the pain in your <laughs> your voice with that one. Yeah, early this morning. Solana's I woke up and I, all I read was Solana had an outage. I'm like, God darn it. Yeah. We're doing so good. 
right it's been almost a year since the last outage yeah because they, they said they um supposedly fixed that issue supposedly yeah it looks like something something broke something yeah because the issue beforehand was solana's price just like transaction fees are so cheap that people were just spamming the network okay and it was just congesting it causing outages that's what happened this this time no, the, oh the previous time okay so they they suffered from a ddos attack yeah a dos attack this uh denial of service yeah so you just weren't able to process it so what they did was they essentially just added i don't remember exactly what they did now trying now i'm thinking about it to the previous to the previous uh so they, i know they i know they fixed that's so why we haven't added anything mm -hmm. but it's something with the fees that oh they did a laddering method to fees so depending what you were going to do on the network the fees would vary okay for that specific sector mm -hmm. so if you're doing nfts it would vary on the nft cost and if you're doing this it would vary prices it would okay. matter so like probably if if you're doing a transaction that required a lot of data uh increase fees most or something likely. like that yeah because if you if it requires a lot of data and you're just spamming fees yeah uh, transactions like that's gonna cause congestion for sure yeah and f i haven't looked in the afternoon or any time yet or any time recently but i we everyone was waiting on to see what the solana devs were going to say about it yeah apparently they found the actual bug pretty fast um but it just took a couple hours for it to to get deployed yeah so we don't know what happened but that's sad yeah Sol dropped a little bit in price today i, I don't know i don't know if it recovered though did it that's 97 dollars. okay i don't know you i don't think you consider what happened today a drop no yeah well because if you let i put up an eight it did chart. drop four like three to four percent i have a bitcoin drop that <laughs> bitcoin experience downs today what what what's his date the fifth today's a six six I mean, you one day. Oh, no. Day hasn't closed yet, right? Yeah, the day has not closed yet. But on so trading, you gotta do the... On trading view, it has. Eight hours. On trading view, Oh, really? Has. Yeah. Different time zones. This is it. The six. Market peak for Bitcoin, 43. It's a, a nice little dip. It's a 2% dip. Bitcoin. Okay, so... Yeah, man, Solana only fell like three to four percent, uh, facing a whole. Solana dropped. Yeah. The that that must mean that like the people using Sol are super um, confident in how it in in the network. And Solana dropped five percent uh, from ninety seven to ninety three. Okay, and it's it did it recover that? It's at it's on yeah. It's peak price was 97.77 it's currently at 97.23 cents oh it's right in the same so so i didn't even budge because of that outage issue then no yeah. well it did and then it just well yeah, yeah it's it just like i guess people have come to see it as like oh just standard operation for solana they unfortunate but obviously. it's not it's been a year it's been a year correct but nothing that solana hasn't done before like if it was like the first downtime yeah the only thing is moving forward they do they can't have any more outages no just, they can't they really can't the chain is no longer new it's been out for too long you mm -hmm. shouldn't have these issues mm -hmm. wow yeah that was a uh, big news today for sure huge news. but it didn't really budge bro 93 no, yeah seeing how the price recovered so fast and it only went down marginal like i mean bitcoin went down and bitcoin kind of like it takes the market. All coins follow Bitcoin. So it's like did did the, the crash even affect the price or was Solana just follow like following the market? Cause even I'm looking at Kujera and Kujera also dumped five percent today. Respectfully. And the and, Co and Kojira didn't didn't had no didn't, issues didn't experience no so it's like doesn't matter in terms of Solana's ecosystem it didn't do it, it didn't, didn't do, anything, do anything not even a flinch more so Bitcoin went down and those already are, are, are already had the issues so it's just like oh mm -hmm. but it didn't dump that's actually a pretty decent news for Solana yeah 
I like the fact that like it didn't the price did yeah. not tank to complete another but it will be under the magnifying class glass moving forward yeah it can happen for sure yeah. that cannot happen that's unacceptable especially if people it's not a, people it's institutions a, it's start a, using it or use it correct solana is a top five crypto and yeah. none of them in the top 10 are experiencing these issues no so like they can't experience these issues it needs to get its, its act together yeah for sure 100 <laughs> percent that was uh that was just the r- raging news today i was just surprised it didn't flinch i mean that's that's just good news though yeah uh, who wouldn't be surprised i i hear a network outage and you would think maybe 15 20 percent especially seeing how crypto is super volatile yeah showing that it didn't move either crypto is no longer volatile or people in Solana just really, really think Solana is going to be end game and it's going to flip ETH. Um, yeah. ETH, yeah, uh, Solana haters are we're loving it. Oh yeah, sure. for sure, hundred percent. Anyone on ETH, <laughs> losers. Yeah, we don't have those issues. Yeah. So I don't know. ETH, I think, has a very good like battleground set for it this year. In terms of like its competitiveness, and I think it'll do pretty good. Seeing, assuming that the Dankun upgrade goes un like What's unhitched, unhitched, yeah. And there's a lot of like potential upside for it. Seeing how the the ETF is also around the corner. Mm-hmm. However, um, although like this this whole like upgrade will stimulate a lot of more development on on the blockchain. If the main chain cannot keep up with Solana, I think it still has a good amount of time to like fall behind. ETH? Yeah, ETH. Yeah. Yeah, because the sharding thing isn't going to be implemented for a couple of years, according to, to ETH or Yeah, at that rate, if Solana gets its act together. Exactly. Hey, well, um, ETH, at ETH. least ETH layer one, ETH as a layer one, as the mm-hmm. token chain, the main chain itself, doesn't become obsolete yeah pretty much pretty much you rather be using yeah because right now everyone's rather use the layer twos but the layer twos are not compatible with each other um well that's a good thing about this um this upgrade making making these transactions cheaper uh, it will incentivize developers to to work on it more and create new new tools and and yeah but you still have to bridge it over and you still gotta wait hopefully that you have to wait that you, and you have to wait and hope that that bridge works perfectly smooth and your tokens don't get lost in well, the yeah. movement you, that's kind of like end user thing but like developers would, would have more incentive to work on those bridges and make it make it faster you don't have to bridge anything on Solana they just communicate uh, okay well the layer 2 is on it just communicate with each other I don't, I don't know how that works uh, technically but if it's if it's seamless it's that's the, obviously the competitive advantage that's obviously the competitive advantage um, but in terms of market cap, so long has got a ways to go. A long ways to go. One problem at a time. <laughs> ETH has been here since 2010. Yeah. In Solana. Almost. Solana came out what? So ETH's currently sitting at $286 billion, while Solana's at $42 billion. $42.5 billion. Solana launched March 2020. Two years? Three. Four now. Oh, 2020, my bad. Damn, I heard 2020. I processed 2022. Completely processed 2022. Okay, four years. Each launch 2015. I said 20. 2010. Yeah, 2015. So, yeah, if there's a buddy coming through your lunch money that, that's that much younger than you, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You've had time to get your shit together. Yeah, five, five years uh, advantage is significant. But then again, ETH was a proof of work blockchain beforehand. You had five years to get your shit together. <laughs> yeah, to get it, got got to get your act together, ETH. ETH developers, Solana, Solana's coming for you. I won't buy ETH, but I'll buy its layer twos. It's okay. It's layer two, right? <laughs> I won't buy you because yeah. you. I don't there's, like you. But your layer twos, I layer twos are gonna have some. They they can tickle. Yeah, they could definitely see some major upside. Um, don't get me wrong, ETH. Is still going to benefit from that because 
ETH, so layer two transaction fees go towards ETH. Yeah. So ETH is going to benefit, but um, definitely ETH will not receive the same pump. I'm going to call it. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say on this podcast right now. Breaking news. No. Clip it. <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> ETH will not break six and a half thousand dollars, in my opinion. This bull run. Six and a half? Yeah. Just to be just to undershoot, just because if I to say undershoot? Anything. I thought that was generous. <laughs> hey man, talking shit. <laughs> nah, this man's talking shit. But six and a half K. Because people I see numbers saying 15, 10, 11. Really? Yeah. Oh, damn, I'm just saying conservative numbers then. I don't know. The lowest number I've seen so far is four. No, I will go four. I'll see four. For sure. I don't think it breaks six and a half. If it if it does, I'll I'll say on this podcast I was wrong. <laughs> For sure. I'll be here and I'll say I was wrong. Uh huh. But my money see. is on it does not break six and a half. Okay. Let's let's see. Let's see. <laughs> let's see how that goes. Bull market top does ETH, not hit uh, six and a half. William short teeth. <laughs> I will short eat at that price. <laughs> Better yet, I'm buying shorts at the peak. At the peak. <laughs> at the peak, I'm buying shorts. <laughs> I'm riding that wave down. At, at six at, at sixty five hundred, you're buying you're buying shorts. Buying puts. <laughs> damn, that's a bold statement, William. Bold statement, but damn, you saw someone price predict ETH. At 50, I saw it on Twitter. At fifteen k. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, that guy is. That guy's got to be an ETH developer. <laughs> got to be an ETH soul hater. <laughs> no, because he had soul like at a thousand. Oh wow. Ten <laughs> x for soul. 10x so so from where it is not from 20 bucks oh yeah from where it is oh because he priced it in at 20 well so was that 20 yeah okay true 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 you gotta price it right before bull run uh, oh, was officially oh, I see. announced I, right i see not bull run nah, happening nah, nah yeah not in the midst of the early yeah. phases of the bull run okay i see so what was what was eth at but pre-bull run then Oct- so eth bro- bitcoin bro i mean bitcoin solana broke that around End of October. End of October. Oh, let's see. I'll, I'll tell you right now. One year. Um, ETH. October was at 1,500. So, October 19th. Oh, no. 19th is when it broke up. Broke out. Um, yeah, about 1,500. 1, yeah, 1,500, 600. Yeah, October 19th was... 1600 bucks yeah that's that that is the the, the beginning of the bull market because when everything shot up it's when everything started going in the green ethereum is sitting pretty in the green since then nice and pretty it's up green. 50 percent crypto is such a beautiful market as man. of right now it's such a beautiful market solana i has the just because fo- I'm that guy. Has the FOMO kicked in yet? Huh? Has the FOMO? It's been kicked. kicked. It's been kicked. <laughs> Facts. It's been kicked in for a while. Solana. Mind you, ETH is up fifty percent. Solana at current price, what percent do you think it's up? Two x. Three hundred five percent. Three point five. Wow. Okay. Three point five x. Three hundred five percent. Oh, three hundred and five percent. Yeah. 3x closer to 4 is it? it was at 20 bucks okay yeah you're right Solana's Solana's getting that ground that ground momentum just running so moving on from this Solana debunk the, the fucking ETH. bullshit that happened today <laughs> and ETH killer which I don't know if it'll kill ETH but it'll, I'll perform ETH probably percentage wise minimum per- it is outperforming ETH it's not about the that. question the question is how how bad will the ETH ETF hurt ETH once it depends on liquidations that's what I'm saying so talking about liquidations since we're here that's the issue I mean mentioned liquidations Genesis Global another <laughs> crypto lending company I went bankrupt It wants to go to court and wants to liquidate one point six billion dollars worth of um GBTC that it has. Now this is a combined number. This is the Bitcoin Trust, the ETH, and the Ethereum Classic Trust they want to get rid of, mm-hmm. which totals one point five billion. 
So I'm going to separate those numbers for you. The Grace, uh, the Bitcoin trust alone has 1.3 billion. Oh, wow. That's a big bag. Yeah. Uh, in, in ratio of its bag. It's yes. A big per- percentage of its then, <clears throat> portfolio. Yes. Then the ETH um, percentage is 169 million. Mm-hmm. And then ETH Classic is 38 million. Billion. Sorry. 169 billion, 38 million. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Correct. And it wants to liquidate all that. It's liquidate all that. Any particular reason? Or they're in bankruptcy. They wanna pay they wanna pay its debtors. They wanna they wanna pay its debtors. Which I don't think they would be allowed to liquidate the ETH one yet. Because it's a trust. Yeah, they wouldn't be. I don't think they would. I don't think that one may be allowed or the Ethereum classic. There had to be some like legal mumbo jumbo there. There would have to be something that, that would be done there. Now the Bitcoin one, I do think they'll be they'll be get granted permission to liquidate those. Yeah, for sure. So you'll see another 1.3 billion hit the market instantly of Bitcoin. Mm. And I will say something right now, and it's not financial advice because we don't do that here. We don't do financial advice. I will only say what I will do at that point in time once I hear that they're liquidating 1.3 billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. I'm buying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that guy from Wolf of Wall Street. I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> I will be buying. Well, I will be buying. Definitely not selling it. I will give a numbers right now. I'm definitely not selling it. What? So, what do you think Bitcoin price would hit if? I have no idea. Yeah, rough. Because okay. the number. Because this is why. Mm-hmm. I'm selling the house if it's if it, if it reaches. 30 you don't have bucks. a house to sell for sure. <laughs> we'll so find a house to sell. Roughly from the number. The last time I saw this number was. It sucks that we keep on talking about it. Mm-hmm. These ETFs, the Bitcoin ETFs, are buying up respectfully five to six thousand dollars, five to six thousand bitcoins, bitcoins a day. Mm-hmm. They're sucking the. They're sucking Bitcoin up like it's yeah, you know, like there's no tomorrow. Jesus himself, pretty, <laughs> pretty much. I if you want to try cancel me for that one, go ahead. I That's don't. On you. I don't blame them for that though. I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> people ready to cancel you for it or any or any other religion you want to put in there they'll be sucking them off too yeah pretty much they're told and everything your phone is not on vibrate i put it i put it on focus mode william that's why i was like shocked i put it on focus mode interesting so i don't remember what i was going with this uh the oh they're buying up five to six thousand so that would obviously they're still buying that up i think retail would probably swoop in when that price crashes mm-hmm. and if they don't I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> but with that, with that dump, you may see that 20% market correction people have been talking about, which we're still on the fence about, really. Honestly, yeah. Like, I'm kind of, like, nervous that I won't see it. You, <laughs> if not, you already saw it. It's really what it's going to be. Because if you're looking at the weekly, it's towards the bottom. Oh, okay. Weekly RSIs are towards the bottom. However, the daily is at the very top. And it's been at the top. And it's been at the top. What's up with that? So you could see How's that the a thing? daily. How is that a thing? It'd be like that. <laughs> so what we could see is daily R size start to come down. That weekly does its final swoop down. As daily hit the bottom, weekly is also reset completely. Mm-hmm. Completely reset. And it's. And then daily resets. And then all and you the- got to look up is to the moon. <laughs> and just be like, we're on our way. Yep. Essentially. Because daily much. dailies are at least for Bitcoin, daily RSI is at the top mm-hmm. and the weekly is starting to hit the bottom. Yeah. Hasn't gone all the way down, but it's starting to get it's there. It's starting to get there. If you look at the RSI in terms of overbought and oversold as a general market, weekly time frame, they're more in the middle. They were mm-hmm. over, they're really hot. They're, they've cooled off. They cooled since off since the little little rally that we had. But I will say Bitcoin doesn't need to decide what it wants to do. Either up or down, but it needs to pick. It does need to pick because we're in a wedge, it's, we've and, been, we, and we're we have, we're breaking this wedge at one point or another. We've been we've been consolidating for for a minute now, haven't we? We have. It's kind of painful. So it has to decide what it's gonna do. It's kind of painful. We'll find out Thursday. It's, it's got me on the edge of my seat. Yeah. What I will say, if we look at um, we'll we'll, sh- we'll get this to Marlito to put now here. Marlito, I want this chart here. You can make it nice and big for us. So it's essentially the 
Bitcoin, you've seen this chart. It's it's the it's the chart representing the halvening mm-hmm. in time, and then oh, okay. the halvening line, and then what happens next. Mm-hmm. We're currently pushing towards that little red zone of market cool down, and then whoosh, market top. We're Take still off. working our way there mm-hmm. towards the towards halvening. Towards seven or seventy-seven days, respectfully, towards halvening mm-hmm. before that. So yeah. you might We're, see a little stretch of that, maybe a pullback, maybe yeah. not. Or what typically yeah, we're happens? Definitely, we're we're like within the range of the the local, from the local high, the the little drop, the yeah. correction from the local high. Correct. Though. We're within range. This is kind of what we're waiting for. Yeah, you can. Just, I'll show it to you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Oh fuck you. Well, no, you just said it. You told me I seen it. I know. I know, I know exactly. But it's an updated about. one. Oh, that's updated. Yeah, this is from yeah, February current, fourth. Current prices. Okay. I haven't seen that one. Was exactly. It? Thank you for the information. So we're currently in a little. I don't know. I might sell a kidney or something. That might, man. I don't know how I'm gonna sell a kidney, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. If you're out there in the market for a kidney, maybe a testicle. Let me know. Let me know. I might, I might take a little bit of convincing, but it's all about Bitcoin. I'm not selling my body parts for for Bitcoin. I don't think I'll do that. No? No, I think that's pushing it. You can sell your little pinky toe. I don't think anyone's in the market for a pinky toe. Maybe, I don't know. I wouldn't know. Testicles are in demand. You have two? Exactly. So you can sell, You can get rid of one. I, I got kidneys too, right? I think you have two of those two. Two kidneys. You can get rid of one. What I should sell is part of my liver. That grows back. Exactly. That's just win. That's just straight, straight wins. You're not wrong. But yeah, that's currently where we are in the market. And in terms of Bitcoin and the great, well, and Grace and Grayscale, and Genesis wanting to sell, liquidate their assets. So Genesis uh, trying to liquidate in terms of to resolve their bankruptcy issues. We get money at least. Yeah, through that, through that. Um. BlockFi is set to start paying off some of their their debtors uh, soon. Uh, I couldn't find any specific numbers, but they should be receiving anywhere between twenty to forty percent of whatever they're owed um, in a fr- in the initial payment. It, so they're breaking up payments. Yeah, I mean Celsius is sorry paying off theirs. Yeah, um, Celsius. I don't I don't remember correctly because I know BlockFi did, but. Did Celsius go into bankruptcy because of the whole FTX issue, or it was it was something? It was because of their their over, over they, they over invested into those are their own issues. Yeah, yeah. So BlockFi um, fell into bankruptcy when FTX fell. Okay, so it it was one of the lenders to FTX. Yeah, or one of the borrowers. Yeah, so they're waiting to get money from FTX. Also, that's why they're only receiving twenty to forty percent. No. Yeah, they're waiting for the rest of their funds to come in. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, Celsius came. Celsius uh, got bankrupt because they overinvested in their mining operations, and then the Bitcoin price crashed, tanked. Yeah, and people come and withdraw. Mm-hmm. And f- f- in that situation, you're only getting back twenty six percent of your asset if you held, Bit- if you held the actual so, coin itself. Yeah. So at the time of like their filing, it was supposed to be fifty seven percent, yes, fifty eight percent really, of crypto. But prices went up. Because prices essentially doubled and tripled yeah, and whatever. Price of price of the crypto assets went up. So then being paid out from whenever they are whenever it was recorded, you're technically getting less of what you should be getting. Yeah. You said or, what? Well, you are getting less. You're getting yeah. less of the asset. Yeah. Or cash, depending on however they're they're no. just paying out in the asset itself? Yeah. You're getting paid that. Okay. But like if you had if you had for an example a hundred dollars worth of if you had a thousand dollars worth of stable coin, mm-hmm. You're getting fifty six percent of that back, or fifty eight percent of that back. Uh-huh. Just straight up fifty seven, fifty eight percent. Yeah, but since um, you hold a fluctuating asset, then you're only getting back. Exactly. It's people pricing things in dollars. Yeah, I price things in the asset, man. And then there's those who had, for example, like cr- currencies that went down in price. Mana, mana, because that's the video we saw. Mm-hmm. Technically, there's more other ones. There are whatever bit, whatever asset is lower than yeah, now, whatever, yeah. what, of time of recording. They're technically earning, yeah, earning more. Yeah. But just from 
earning more well i think it depends on on how much it went down but like yeah, yeah. in this situation it literally went down half because i think mana was at 80 cents and, or at eight cents or at, or at 80 cents and now instead of that it's eight or four cents mm -hmm. or whatever yeah so it went down significantly yeah, that video that you sent me, it said that mana holders, if I remember correctly, if you had like a thousand dollars in the you got Celsius, you got four hundred more. Yeah, something like that. You got four hundred more dollars. Um, so four hundred more mana token or something like that. Yeah, more mana. I think in, in dollar value they made like seventy five bucks. Yeah. So, yeah, um, for anyone holding Bitcoin and Soul on Celsius, so you got. Yeah. You're getting less. Yeah. Uh, soul holders are getting... the So the adjusted price you said for Bitcoin holders is 26%. Yeah. For... for It was 22% for soul. 22% for soul. Big, big So difference. what did the price dumps down from that time? You get a little more then, right? Oh, oh. Well, yeah, because what, the way the math is, is if you were to buy that asset back. So, yeah. So if the price goes down, you're still getting the same amount of dollars... Because you're still getting the 57.9% of time of recording. Gotcha. But if you were to take those dollars and buy that asset back, yeah. you're getting less of the asset. Gotcha. I see. So that's what it is. That's how, that's kind of like what the video will be in the description. I think you guys can watch it. Yeah. So then like if, if the price goes down, then yeah, that, that, that ratio will go back up. Gotta, to, just getting finger fucked. Here. Yeah. No, for sure. hundred percent. Anyone who. Put their trust in Celsius. Which is a lot of people. My, my sentiments go out to you. A lot of people did. Yeah. But yeah, and then FTX is, is going to have the same issue. FTX is going to have the same issue? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Their, their payout. Oh, their payout, like whoever. It's the same way. Okay. It's a time of recording. Yeah, of course, of course. So they're 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 getting, they're, it's being said they're getting 100% um, recovery. That's so favorable for these they're companies. Not. That's super favorable for them. Yep. So also, to those in Celsius, you're getting 15% in stock value as well. Yeah. Of their new mining company. Whether it's profit or whatever or you can do with it is a different story, but you're getting that as well. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a small percentage, 6.4%. That can fluctuate. That's coming from illiquid assets. Yeah. And they're going to be selling those off. Which... That's going to take time. Yeah. Because they're illiquid. It's a slow burn here. Yeah. Oh man, it's a good thing we're in the market already. If you're if you've been around for the last two bull runs, you, you play this you, one like it's your last. You you play this one like it's the last bull run. You're here hereby dubbed a veteran. Play this play this bull run like it's the last bull run. Like it's the last one because it might be. It might be it might be the, the biggest bull run you ever see, and it might be the last big bull run. Yeah, before people before the industry gets more regulated yeah before it gets fucked Nef right. before it gets fucked bro <laughs> before it gets fucked let's just um, let's be honest here we're gonna get fucked listen i want to segue okay so something more exciting yeah let's do it let's do it i'm i'm, I'm tired of this depressed <laughs> conversation i'm gonna play this video because yeah. i don't think alex has seen it i have not seen it i don't so, know what video you're showing me but i'm assuming if you're playing it's because i haven't seen it now the question is will we face copyright huh Will we face copyright issues because of no, this? No, it's on Twitter. Okay. 11 second video. Okay. Oh, it's Jay Powell. It's... Ready? Mm -hmm. The U.S. is on an unsustainable fiscal path. The U.S. federal government is on an unsustainable fiscal path. And that just means that the debt is growing faster than the economy. I sure. hope the sense just worries you very much. Over the long run, of course it does. You know, we're effectively, we're borrowing from future generations. It's time for us to get back to putting a priority on fiscal sustainability and and sooner is better than later that that's uh exactly why um we can't have old people in in office or in positions of power like this my opinion because this is the old guy saying it. yeah yeah he's he's yeah he's saying it uh he's saying what the cause what the, the issue is um but he says it doesn't bother him i'm glad that he's aware of well it. he didn't say that he said long run is long a run. Broad, yeah, problem, but he also but is in control of it. He isn't. In, he is in control. He of isn't. It. He isn't in control of it. No, he doesn't work for the treasury. Ah, uh, true. He true works that. for a federal reserve. True that. I mean, he works for yeah, the federal reserve. Federal right? reserve. Yeah, yeah, not the treasury. True that. True. True. true so true. he has no control over the spending. Yeah, he has no control over spending. What he has control over is in in 
Yeah, but like if he keeps on, uh, what is it? Raising interest rates? Mm hmm. No, if he keeps on lowering interest rates. Lower them yet. No, no, true, true that. But like if he if he decides to lower interest rates, it will just make it easier for the for the government to spend more money. Because he can because the government can cannot afford mm-hmm. the current if they have to refinance their rates mm-hmm. that they have at two and one and three mm-hmm. percent to the current seven percent or six percent they would have to do it at, mm-hmm. the government cannot afford that interest payment mm-hmm. financially. They just cannot afford it. America would default. They would default on their own debt. Because he cannot afford it. Mm-hmm. So he has no choice but to lower it. If he wants to keep the Mer- the American government running. Yes. That guy needs to <laughs> raise rates. You can't. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You can't. <laughs> you, you. Yeah, no. Um, but he's definitely aware of the, the, the issue. Which, because of this, also I have it from Michael Saylor. Is um Michael Saylor posted that? Well, he yeah, but it's a sixty-minute uh, interview that he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Um, GDP, if it's not going up and interest rates stay high with our loan as big as it is, we yeah, the American government will definitely default, and it will be something that will eventually be taxed by the next generations to come. Hundred percent. That's not fair. That's not fair to them. Why do we do this to them? We, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, you wasn't like, my spending. You're like, that's not me. You're like, that's not me. And before anyone goes, this is one. This is not not a Democrat prop, Democratic a Democrat problem, or a Republican problem. This is not a tax problem. This is a spending problem. Yeah, it's a spending problem. 100. percent Yes. If you lower taxes, it's less money coming in. Not arguing that. But it does not matter if you're still increasing spending. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially it, when, there's no, when there's no limit irrelevant. on how much debt we could have. Exactly. Also, that does not help at all. Even if they did have limits, they always raise it. That's also true. So, so what's the point of having the So what's the point of having It's the like limit? they didn't have a debt limit in the first place. Exactly. No, facts. Um, and it's like you said, it's not, it's not a Democrat or Republican thing because both parties like to spend money. Exactly. Absurd amount of money. No. Like I don't like, like in terms of the Republican Party, they're all the pro strong military. But then that's like, spending money. Yeah, but then that, also the Pentagon doesn't know where the money's at. That's the issue. Like that's a big issue. Yeah. I think. Like if you're gonna spend your money, make sure you know what's going on with it. Yeah. Same way Democrats spend money and they don't know where the money goes either. Like mm-hmm. they spend the money and it goes misused or mm-hmm. they lose it or mm-hmm. it's sent out somewhere mm-hmm. or whatever. Covering up. Uh, Laptop conspiracies. It doesn't I don't care where it did. <laughs> it's so bullshit. Yeah, that's the issue. That's the, that's the big issue. Uh, We're not tax, getting any tax, return for as our a, money. As a taxpayer, you should be heavily invested and extremely cautious about how that money is being spent. You should be upset they're taking your money and misspending it in things you don't want to spend on. 100%. 100%. I don't care about taxes itself. I care about the fact of, th- you want to take my money? Great. Yeah. Fine. What are you doing make with it, it? Make it useful. That's the thing. But then the issue is that it's not being spent usefully. It's going into the pockets of people who control it. Now, if now, pardon me, but this is a crypto podcast. I like where he goes. Pardon me, but if all these transactions were kept on chain in something we like to call a DAO, Distributed Autonomous Organization, where all transactions are public to individuals and not kept behind closed doors and voted on, we could see how efficient the money is being spent. Why are people so skeptical about using technology like this? Why is this not going to be like this? At least I currently do not see a resolution besides that to how, uh, how to fix this whole corruption issue. In terms of like how money is being misspent in the government, because they don't want it fixed. That's the issue. That that is very true. How the people in charge do not want it fixed because how, then they lose power. How difficult would it be? We already have social security numbers. Every every United States citizen has a number saying you belong to us. You are this number. Yeah. How difficult would it be to create a wallet mm-hmm. with that number 
that whenever there's elections, you have an app and it goes and then it goes in, it goes into your phone. And for those who need, who have, who don't have access to those things, you have a way to do it in person mm -hmm. or mail in, depending on whatever situation. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take these options away from you on chain. An app. It goes, it goes, boop. It goes, it's time to do this. These are your options. Mm -hmm. And it connects to your thing with your login information or or you log in with your social security number, do, 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 put in the government app or the government service mm -hmm. and it logs in automatically on your computer. It, it does this thing. You can just answer the, go, this is what, this is this, uh, uh, whatever. And it goes on chain, gets reported. Yeah. And then the people who are to do it in person or mailed in, it gets reported and it's sent in. And that person who did that, uh, who sent it in, gets a physical copy of what they signed. Saying, this is this is my paper, this is verified by me, verified by the person in the bo voting booth. You keep that and then the digital app, the digital side of it gets sent over. That way if you can report that there's an inaccuracy, mm -hmm. you have the physical proof one. Mm -hmm. That's stamped by the person working there. Is there room for for some sort of like f fudgery, fuckery? Yeah. yeah. Yes, on the physical side, yes, because you can forge, you can do whatever. Mm -hmm. You you can't do that. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's per, it, you know we're trying to solve a big multifaceted. Exactly, issue. you can only There's make like, it better. Yeah, so you but try it, something. And it gets rid of the difficulties mm -hmm. of it because why would I would rather do it from my phone? Oh, or my computer if I had the same thing and it's on chain and it gets read automatically mm -hmm. and you can't really fuck with it that's not saying it solves the issue makes it better though you know what's another thing that you're just now thinking about what's up a lot of people don't have the greatest reading comprehension skills and when it comes to like dumb it down yeah take the lower speak out bro we put it we put it on a, on on the phones we could literally have like a little youtube video or like a little video that just says oh this bill is gonna set to do this a little like inform like two minute video on what you're gonna be voting on i think that's too long yeah because there, there are a lot of bills that yeah get read true that it, so it'll be too long mm -hmm. but 30 seconds one there, minute, whatever but there you can make it mm -hmm. easier we need to embrace technology Good technology. Not all technology is necessary. And not all technology is good. But. Yeah. The whole. The whole issue with the government. That's that's kind of like what started the whole crypto revolution. But yeah. A bunch of cypherpunks out there saying, you know what? Uh, security is super important. And then w one of the big like advocates for it, the p person who brought it center stage was Edward Snowden. Talking about everything that the CIA does and the FBI spying on people you know there's a lot of controversy with snowden how how is there controversy with snowden well if you brainwash you don't like snowden is what i'm thinking well no I, I will not say that not that you don't like him but the what he did was also yes he he showed light on the fact that the nsa cia mm -hmm. all these people are listening more to the u.s agency uh, u.s people than around the world not denying any of that mm -hmm. but also the amount of information he did release also puts like what some of the u.s's capabilities and it puts that out to their adversaries mm -hmm. which that in terms of security is a security threat because now you have oh yeah that's absolutely why he left <laughs> which 100 is 100 why he left so that's the but like his his thing was mostly like he exposed it he didn't he didn't Exposing is putting out there that we have the capability of that. For, and all they have sure. to do is, okay, they did this. How did they do this? Uh -huh. did, we know this capability exists. Mm -hmm. How did they get there? And mm -hmm. then you just to have eaves, to, to eavesdrop. Is, exactly. Is what you want. Like fighting eaves, the eavesdrop. He got the final an You He gave the final answer. Mm -hmm. And you already had some he pretty much. He pretty much gave China the playbook. Exactly. He pretty much gave China the playbook. So you're giving the enemy mm -hmm. the info on how to re but redo it. I think the issue is that when it comes to like a surveillance state issue like that yeah um having that information in public will benefit society overall granted we will have short-term re repercussions like like a surveillance state like china going on but overall people are aware and and 
anyone in China who who tries to to see past that veil of like fake protection will see that it's what they disguise as protection is actually surveillance. I don't agree. No. Okay. No, it's called communism. It's called control. Oh, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You doing that doesn't do anything. If the person, if that's only, if that's the only thing yeah. they believe in, yeah. or the only thing they've ever seen. So China, it, the CCP, is pretty much trying to make people think. No, that no, they, no. And also, you're not understanding. I'm not saying their capability on eavesdropping on their own people, mm-hmm. using the same capability to eavesdrop on the rest of the world. It's exposed. We're aware of it. With awareness comes the ability to find it and surpass it i don't think so of course no yeah they because everyone got tiktok on their phone and everyone fell for it either way so no yeah. i don't i don't think so but that's different it's not it kind of is because this is just plain up ignorance and it still became the most popular app yeah william i don't i'm not disagreeing with that <laughs> i'm not so i don't think that. that's that okay the difference is this is in your face the other one was we're saying it we're saying it's protected but it's not protected okay so like in the case of bitcoin satoshi nakamoto there's a list of of uh, encryption protocols Mm -hmm. that the nsa deemed as unbreakable yes satoshi didn't use any one of those on that list he's a completely different one it wasn't it was not deemed by the nsa as not unbreakable it wasn't even mentioned by the nsa that's not what i saw i saw a video talking about it and said he chose the one that the NSA has no backdoor into. Correct. But it wasn't on the list of the ones that NSA said that they don't have a backdoor to. This list, the, the NSA said that we do not have backdoors to these encryption protocols. And then Snowden came out and said, you do have a list. And then yes. he, the one that Satoshi used, does not have a backdoor. You're using the real I sent you today. I sent you this information. You I, I sent you this today. Okay. Well, you said, oh, it was, it was on the, it was on the, it was on the sometimes crypto message. Yes. Right. But yeah, that's that's exactly what I mean. Like, yes, and he chose the only one that they don't have a back door into. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that. Again, you're looking at it from the the perspective of the good guy or a person trying to do good using the one. In this case, Satoshi. Again, but before I'm not before, talking about that. Before Snowden announced all this. Yes, I'm not talking about him. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the enemies of the U.S. or. That's so what they use these terms of they use this encryption and we re, we have already deemed that as a vulnerable disc- encryption. What do you mean? Okay, so you're getting what I'm saying is you're giving the playbook to those who didn't have the playbook or didn't have the best kept playbook. You're giving them our playbook, but it's, or, it's been marked as vulnerable. Yes, but you're not understanding. I understand what you're telling me, mm-hmm. but if you have the playbook, you can now create your own off of it. When you had zero, mm-hmm. you couldn't keep up. Now you you are on a better okay. playing field. In this particular case, you got to keep both sides at check. Yes, I understand what you're saying. You're, you're giving you're giving these you're giving the enemy of the state information on how to get better. But at the same time, you're keeping the state in check because that's what that's something that we don't want. I'm gonna say yes, but they're still doing it. So why? Yeah. what was the point of it? Because they're going to do it anyways. Then what's the point? You should assume they were listening from the beginning. Watergate, yeah, oh, was, no, you, you Watergate was a thing before Snowden had to drop this. <laughs> yeah. What's your point? Yeah, but Watergate was like people actually inside the building of Watergate for Nixon. Yeah, but they're still listening in. Mm-hmm. The point was they were tapping phones. 100%. They're doing the same that thing. Was, and that was all illegal. Exactly. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is they were already doing illegal things then. Mm-hmm. Nixon got out. Mm-hmm. The NSA doing it and then, then them reporting that to me. Yes, I'm not saying it was right. was wrong what he did. Mm-hmm. not arguing so that. Uh, okay. What I'm saying is the government's already doing fuck shit and you're not stopping the fuck shit. You, he okay, so he, he didn't did, stop he did the stop fuck it. shit. He didn't all stop he did it. was make it aware, but nothing changed because of it. You're, you're, you're we all for example we all know politicians do stock trading nancy pelosi is currently up a million dollars in 73 days no one's stopping her from doing these stock trades either way that's also true yeah what if, yes it's all broken <laughs> it's all broken what i'm saying is homie did that <laughs> let ha- 
became USA Public Enemy number one for breaking that the, the trust he had. Number one, absolutely. And then the U, as U.S. citizens, we did nothing. Uh, I wouldn't say that they still have you. Uh, yeah, the vast so, majority still are don't have not come come around to realizing. What do you mean the vast majority? The vast majority of people do not realize how much information of theirs is publicly accessible and yeah. and how easy their information is to be snooped on. Yes. That's 100%. Like I'm not going to lie. But Snowden was the first step in 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 getting past that. But we haven't taken any more steps to do to to counteract it. I would disagree with that statement. I wouldn't. Why do you think we were in the industry of distributed blockchain technology? <sighs> That's literally the number. I'm not but the banks are terrified. Yes, I'm not saying that is a step. Mhm. What I mean by that is, they I in terms of something. in oh. terms of government though, mm-hmm. and people fighting the government on that end, we haven't taken further steps into them not. I'm t- speaking mm-hmm. specifically listening in to what we're doing and to mm-hmm. our things. I mean, if anything, yeah. what I see is crypto is mm-hmm. we're giving them the biggest fuck you we can. Oh, for sure, hundred percent. But like VPNs, for example, that's a great start. They're trying to take those away. Trying to take away VPNs? Yes. That was the game voted. I don't think it went anywhere, but they were going to b- try to take away VPNs in, in the States. Yes. And I think they also did it somewhere. I think in China, they, they did take it away. Yeah, right? yeah for sure. But v- I'm saying, China doesn't want VPNs. But I'm saying, I'm saying there any, are multiple states. Any where, surveillance state does not want a VPN. Of course, of course. 100%. But I'm, not arguing. I'm not saying China, but I'm saying it was also an issue. If, here. Yeah, yeah. Whoever. Okay. Also, don't quote me on that. I wasn't 100% sure if they did or didn't, but I did read something If there's about that. ever a politician that's <laughs> voting for for the removal. removal of VPN. Or Say making, fuck you. Yeah, you get them out of office immediately. That's not good for anybody. Even if you don't use it, that's just not a good thing. That's yeah. a, a complete infringement on your fright, on your rights. That's what I mean. I mean, we yes, all these things are publicly, and we, in my humble opinion, as a society of 350 million people, we don't do enough I agree to with that combat statement. that. I 100% agree with that statement. We do not do enough. I'm not even just talking crypto. I'm just talking about in general. In general, 100. We see all this corruption within the system, mm-hmm. in surveillance. But, okay, state, so in yes, talking about like this goes all this into, went to a long tangent. This goes into the, the realm of cybersecurity, and there is a huge like um, deficit in the people who are capable of understanding this and actually implementing it within uh, private organizations, their homes, and just individuals in, overall. People do not understand how technology works. It just completely escapes people. Like my father, for example. The guy does not know how a phone call works. Like how can you talk on the phone over here and someone else hears it? Or the radio. I'm like, bro, that's that's simple technology. Radio I don't understand. Phones I'm I also don't understand how it works hundred percent of the time. Frequencies. Phones are also frequencies? Yeah, frequencies. No, they're not. Yeah, well now we also use Wi Fi, so but also frequencies. It's all frequencies. It's all just okay. Frequencies hitting a, a relayer that transmits it somewhere else. Okay. And then something routes it to where it needs to go. It's all the same thing. Okay, I thought it was different. Mm, pretty much all the same thing. I don't think so. Um but like people don't understand that. And then it gets complicated cuz like I'm studying for a test right now and it's fuck it's complicated. It I'm not complicated. Gonna, I'm not going to lie. It's not complicated. It's complicated. Um but like the base, the base principles is like, what specific tool can you use? And we're not using it enough. Like, it took me forever to start using a VPN. I had to fight with you to get one. Yeah, pretty much. But like, it took me forever. I told you like months. Like, yeah. why don't we have a VPN yeah. yet? Yeah. Can we get a VPN? It's ridiculous. Like, I shoot a hundred percent. But like, the thing is, what I do like is like, once you start implementing uh, things that protect your security, your safety, and um, your anonymity to a degree. You your privacy. There's a word. Privacy was the word I was looking for. Once you find implement tools that protect your privacy, you never go back. You're like, this is it. This is it. This is not going away anywhere. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, you go. I was I I was gonna say I will say uh, by also using a VPN and using different countries, Mm -hmm. you realize a lot of countries do limit what website you're getting onto. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Because I I try to get. you try to get on. Different. Not saying I use them or not, but when I you, when you try to get on like regular just website uh-huh. like car gurus, mm-hmm. 
uh-huh. depending on the in the country you're you're using, mm-hmm. it won't let you hop on it. Yeah, that's why we need distributed networks. Distributed. That's that's a key thing. The fact that it is in different locations and applies different rules means that like there will be somewhere that could get you what you need. Yeah, because if it's all located and centralized in one spot. They're all susceptible to the same laws, regulations, or oversight. Yeah, but if also, also, if it was decentralized, it would be pinning like you're everywhere in the world. Huh? It'd be pinning you like you're everywhere. Ideally. Well, ideally. Like the Tor browser. It takes three hops before you even get out of Tor browser, uh, developed by the government for military use. Yeah. You, you enter, you hop, hop, exit hop. And then you reach a you you reach the server you're trying to communicate, but those routes are all anonymous, encrypted, and somewhere else and hashed. Yeah. So like it's like you don't know where the last one went to. Yeah. Except for the exit, the exit, the exit nodes are are the true troopers. So like let's say I have an exit node, if someone exits out of my computer onto like a very illegal website, and they have my IP address, like like someone could come over here and get. Like, yeah. assuming I'm running that here, of course. Because they need to have that one. Yeah, the exit. You, there's always going to be one I, uh, one public IP address that that will be facing the server that should not be mm-hmm. allowed. Now the question is, where is that IP address located? Yeah, that's why it needs to be distributed. Yeah, one dies over here, but then another one pops up over there. It's like, okay, well, it's just never never stopping, but. Not, I'm not advocating for doing illegal Illegal things. I'm just saying, like, protect yourself. Privacy is super important. So we went on a whole tangent. Snowden security. The politicians are crooks. Nancy Pelosi made a million dollars in seventy three days. I want to touch more on that. Okay. Not right now, though. Okay. Or maybe we won't touch on it now. Well, I wanted to get into something that I heard about the I okay uh, USDT. But Nancy did that, and I'm very upset. Mm-hmm. She is a great trader. $73 million? Seven million. Seven million. I mean, a million a in million. 73 days. A million dollars in 73 days? Yes. That's ridiculous. She's great, right? She's an insane trader. Oh, I, oh. Need, I need notes. I need to take, like, like, take, take, I need her to take me under her wing. It's you and me both, brother. You and me both. It's like five times her salary. Oh, oh, by the way, I'll tell you what she did it on. Nvidia, Nvidia, <laughs> all of that was Nvidia trade. Nvidia, I saw I saw a video on t- on X the other day, uh-huh. uh, comparing Nvidia, like a, a a visual representation of, N- of Nvidia, and it was just this massive horse, like monster horse. Nvidia is not playing, but like this horse was like mo- like an actual monster. I've never seen a horse this thick and huge. It was massive. That thing was pulling logs like it was nothing, like a beast. Nvidia is absolute beast, beast mode. Yeah. Taking all these, all these profits from the policies that they're enacting, dude. Before, before people even know if they're gonna get passed or not. I'm gonna say politicians should not be allowed to trade, and it's a crime that they are. And if you want to let them trade, great, fine. They have to alert. They have to alert, disclose it beforehand. And if they fail to disclose it, and they execute the trade. They lose half of it. Goes into taxpayer money. Goes into ta- you. You didn't execute the trade. You lost half of it. Mm-hmm. You executed the trade because you are held. You should be held to a higher standard. Oh, <clears throat> so if they if they go into execute a trade, they have to disclose it. Disclose, disclose it. it. Which if right they, now they do, they have to disclose it too. Mm-hmm. But the fine's like a hundred bucks, two hundred mm-hmm. bucks. That's not enough. That's absolutely not enough. And if they don't disclose it, they lose half the trade. They lose half the trade. And if they Disclose it and don't do it. They lose half of whatever they they said they should put in. Well, what, what, what if they disclose it and they don't do it and they don't do the trade? Yeah. Yes. Because yeah, what's well, to say that they disclose it and then they never do it? And you have to yeah. alert that you didn't that you didn't actually do the trade. Unfortunately, that's a price you pay mm-hmm. for being in the position of power that you enact mm-hmm. and guide the laws that we that are done and the policies created. Unfortunately, sorry. Yep. You lose half of it. I'm not sorry. <laughs> And if you do it and mm-hmm. you don't disclose your trades three times mm-hmm. or you do it and then you get the, the 50, you lose 50% of it after the third one. And that happens. You're not allowed to trade for a year. Fair. 
fair. By the way, this is a crypto podcast. We're not we're just talking about things that we see as injustice. And that's why we're in crypto. Yeah. And that's why we do leverage. <laughs> that's why to William. get to just get fucked hard. <laughs> that's why William does leverage. You're, you're right. <laughs> it's the way from leverage. I I when I did like some contract trades, like uh, put some calls. The just the rush was too much for me. Do leverage you, is the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I stay away from it. To me, it just it just it's just too much. It's like oh, this is this. The excitement, the fear is just on on another level of roller coaster. Then I'm like, okay, nah. Maybe maybe the stress isn't good for my health. <laughs> um, but in terms of profits, uh, USDT has been making killer profits. Um, this last period, they made three billion dollars in profits. Period or quarter? Quarter. Yeah. Is there a difference between uh, period quarter? Uh, I you didn't. When I you didn't say specify, period. I didn't, speci- specify. I didn't specify. You're right. So I said quarter yeah, to be quarter. in the last three months. Yeah, correct. The last quarter they made three billion dollars in profits. Three billion. Yeah. That's a billion a day. I mean a month. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, in profits, not revenue. In profits. Profits. We saw the same video. Yeah, and that's ten percent of J.P. Morgan's profits. Jesus. They must. That's why they hate crypto. Yeah, bro. Literally, you see Jamie Dimon out here on these council meetings. Shitting, yeah, talking crap, saying that crypto's only use cases for for drugs, pornography, and and criminals, and and the dollar is it? Exactly. The dollar is in use for all of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he says it's their only use case. I don't buy drugs, pornography, or criminal activities with my Bitcoin. He buys nothing with it, actually. I, I, you're right. It's just there. It's, it's on. Just, it's on a wallet. It's just, yeah, I wait. I wait in a little bit. Actually, I have bought some things with Bitcoin. Um, pizza. There's a pizza. There's a pizza place, uh, on Miami Ironside that accepts Bitcoin. You bought it with Bitcoin. Yeah. How much was it? I'm just uh, curious to know. Uh, normal price of big uh, pizza, but I don't remember how much Bitcoin. Um, and uh, tickets to the Bitcoin conference back in 2021. But they were giving a discount. No, I bought it from someone who oh. was gonna go, but they couldn't go. Did I go? I got an extra ticket. Uh, does anyone want it? I reached out to them. I was like, yeah, I'm interested here. Okay, yeah, cool. Can you pay in Bitcoin? I was like, of course I can pay in Bitcoin. I'm going to a Bitcoin conference. You're like, I got you. So why can't I pay in Bitcoin? Um, the only fear was, oh, is this a person going to give it to me or not? But it's a Bitcoiner. <laughs> You're like, I'll trust it. I'll take a risk. I took a risk. So <laughs> I, I, did, I did the thing that we shouldn't do. I trusted, not verified. <laughs> I think that's the next step is creating a platform in which you can like, you put the thing mm-hmm. up and whenever it's bought, it's like simultaneously does the transaction. Uh, yeah, escrow. An escrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I don't know why I struggle to find that word. <laughs> it is an escrow, yeah. Yeah, to put in an escrow account to do it. Um, the people at the Bitcoin Grove uh, just got into a, a hackathon okay. type uh, marathon for for building on Bitcoin. And they did this thing called a, a bug bounty resolution. Okay. Uh, so essentially... Uh, Companies would hire developers or put up a bug bounty. Say, "Oh, I'm I have I'm looking for these problems that we need to fix. Uh, if we have them, and I need to fix a certain way, uh, people who would freelancers essentially, someone who knows computer stuff, would try to see if they could identify the issue and fix the issue, uh, and then post it uh, saying, "Oh, I fixed the bounty, but there's the issue where the person who issued the bug bounty." either claims it wasn't done right or doesn't pay or like there's very various issues because like oh the service or mm-hmm. or, or back pedals or, oh i'm not going to pay you that much i'm gonna pay you a little bit less yeah so the bitcoin grove people were working on on something that's like okay you said you're going to pay this for these services and this person committed like this person shows that they fixed it and they met your requirements um the payment that you have on escrow is going to be confirmed by people who are seeing this and going to be like, okay, like they're going to res- resolve it for for the two parties involved. Yeah, it's not going to be just the person, just the the person who issued the bounty, denying the the person who provided the work. Gotcha. It's going to be someone who's re- or a group of people resol- uh, resolving it, an escrow for bug bounty specifically. But yes, mm-hmm. that's that Same is idea. that's the next thing that's going to be coming out. Escrows super important. Yeah. Um, just because that reminded me of something. Apple Vision Pro came out this week. Very true. 
like three thousand bucks, right? Three thousand five hundred. Three point, yeah. So worth it. So worth it. I saw videos. I'm not gonna. I wouldn't use it for like people who are using outdoors and stuff like that. But if you trade or you multitask and you don't want to own or buy other monitors, mm -hmm. it solves the problem. Mm -hmm. I saw a video of this guy who was using it. He was using it to watch sports, have the the stats here, have a cooking tutorial in the kitchen, and he had a social media app open on the side. I saw another one where a trader had three different exchanges opened on it and like a trading view one. Mm -hmm. And he was looking at all of it at the same time. Yeah. It takes away the need for multiple monitors, depending how smooth it works. I mean, it's just augmented reality. Yes. That's that, that is so cool in my opinion. Yes. I just think that the Apple vision pros look goofy. They look so goofy. You're right. But what other headset is doing what the Apple vision pro is doing? None. So why do you, why does it matter? Because you can't look... It's such a cool thing. You can't look cool doing it. You look goofy. That's why it matters. Yeah, but everyone else works... Look, look. It's, no, no, it's, no, no, no. It's a technology that exists now. I'm, like, I'm just being, you can't I'm say just looks, being extra. You can't I'm say it looks being. goofy, though, when you see other people wearing the VR headsets. And they look just... They even look more goofy. They look, they look pretty much just about as good. Exactly. As yeah. But we never made fun of them for it. Yeah, because they're not walking around in public. Because <laughs> you can't. Because you can't. True. <laughs> True that. If you could, you would. <laughs> You could no, one hundred percent. All right, that's my argument here. That's fair. That's fair. But with that being said, mm -hmm. a lot of tokens that connect real world assets to digital assets pumped this week because of it. Because of the Apple Vision, yeah. Pro. And Render also pumped. Oh, okay. Because of it, because Render has to render all that information and make it. Yeah, it's a computing pro. Uh, it's a, a, computer. a computer as a processor, mm -hmm. and since there's not a, and since there's not enough physical service to compute all that, makes sense. That render. Makes sense. That's exactly what I was thinking about. Like you're talking, you're saying, oh, like I have this software, this over here. This. And I was like, how much processing power does this, does this device have? But render solves that issue. Render would solve that issue. Just renders it somewhere else, and it just pops up on you. Correct. On your screen, on your so in your field of view. Saying that render is going to be a nice little play. For sure, definitely gonna be a just good long word because because it's a processing yeah, ability. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, if the bull run goes into twenty twenty five, which it will probably will. No, as of right now, uh, it's said to. And the Apple Vision Pro two gets announced. I don't think it will. No, we're in twenty twenty four. No, no. I think the Vision Pro they might treat it more like their laptops and their um, mm -hmm. their other like their computer devices and give it more room to breathe. Okay, because it's so pricey. Yeah true i don't know i think they would just because it's a modular thing like people will take this out on the road people are taking it out on the road yeah but the thing is you can't like a laptop you can only use when you're sitting down at a table you can take this anywhere you want yeah but but you could only do it when you're sitting down you're not going to be walking around using your laptop yeah but it doesn't have this look at the price tag it's 3500 dollars, and you don't get new models every year of laptops what i'm saying is yeah, you're right. I understand what you're comparing the price uh, and like the product and like the renditions of that. But what I mean is like a laptop has a very limited amount of using capabilities compared to the Apple Vision Pro. Because the Apple Vision Pro, you could walk around. You could have this on, assuming battery life isn't necessarily a thing that we're not accounting for the laptop. It's either. four hours battery life. Okay. Not plugged in. Mm -hmm. you I think. Could, you could literally have this on all day. You could be walking around with this on. Yes. People, there, I saw a video of a guy driving a car with this thing. On. Yes. What I'm saying is, it does not make sense for Apple to do it because the amount of people who are going to rebuy it oh, is okay. much less. Yeah, but they could get more clients. No? Not necessarily true. Let's say me, for example. Apple Vision Pro looks goofy. I choose not to buy it because it looks goofy. I don't think in a year they'll make it look cooler. Or cool, cool enough, enough. To, cool where enough you to, would to, buy yeah, it. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's why I'm saying you'll need at least an extra. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not saying uh, an Apple Vision Pro every year. It'll be every two years. You have to give it time because also you just, for example, the person who just bought $3,500, depending on how it's, uh, how it's selling, which we have no idea. Majority of regular people will not be buying another one for two to three years. 100%, yeah. No, no, they wouldn't. It's not, it's not going to happen. People don't buy Apple Watches every year. Mm-hmm 
regular people, mm-hmm. like not anyone who, who just likes spending money. Yeah. New phones. <laughs> when? How's your phone? Yeah, bro, a couple of years old. Couple you wouldn't. Old. You wouldn't be buying a vision for over you. No, I would not. That's be. my point. Hundred no, percent. No. This is thirty five hundred dollars. I think two to three years. Yeah, but how many people are buying it now? What? The Apple Vision Pro. We don't know. I literally just said we don't know. Okay. Yeah. They'll probably look That's at numbers and be like, "Do we have a Gen two out ready?" Mm-hmm. Yes or no? Yeah, it, I think they're gonna. They, yeah, they're gonna compare how many clients did we get originally, how many yeah. people, like if the if the original there should clientele, be market. There if should, original clientele is high, then uh, yeah, it's gonna be a while. But if it's low, they're gonna need to push out more sales. So they're just edition yeah. number two and push it out. But yeah, I think we're gonna have to wait to to decide on that. Well, what I'm saying is. If it does happen. Also, you got to see feedback. Exactly. Of course. If people goes, oh, it looks goofy. We need this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. They might be like, you know what? We have this on the back burner. uh, And if they don't, then they won't even launch anything until they do have something launchable. All I'm saying is if it does get announced by next year, which is highly likely that it won't, maybe. 50-50 at this point. Grandeur will get another nice nice little pump. But yeah. That's f- fun, fun stuff. I thought it was cool. Yeah, I uh, know. Don't don't get me wrong. The f- the capabilities of it yeah. super cool. Because it also connects to you the Apple products. Like if you oh, have a laptop sure. yeah, open, you get a, you get a text message coming in. You get a little notification. Right there. I didn't mean that. Mm-hmm. I mean because it uses a fake keyboard. But mm-hmm. if you have a laptop, and you like the real keyboard, you, it centers to the real screen, so it'll, it'll stabilize this screen. But you can also create the other screens and type from your actual keyboard mm-hmm. if you're in that um, current setting. Yeah, so like I could be like here looking at one thing and then come Turn around. And start typing on that screen. Essentially. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, because it follows your eyes, so it'll just be like... Apple's ecosystem is pretty established and like yeah. well, well like di- manufactured, uh, engineered. Mm-hmm. Got anything else? I think we can wrap up. I have one thing to wrap up on. Okay. This is from Ash Crypto on Twitter. You should never you should never ask a woman her age, a man his salary, a crypto trader how much money he's have lost. <laughs> yeah, that's that's rude. <laughs> that's rude. <laughs> like if, if, oh my god, that's so rude. <laughs> we were talking about how much we've lost off air. I mean, like even like even just like not taking profits is, is losses in my opinion. I don't agree with that statement. That's fair. Depending on what you're doing, I don't agree. <laughs> if it's Bitcoin, no, you're not. You're smart. Yeah, you're smart. <laughs> well, it depends. To degree, you're back yeah, bro, yeah. It gets scary. Yeah, with, you know. Every other you start, asset, add, you start adding it up, and then you're like, you know, this Bitcoin's kind of just scary as asset to take profit on. Everything else, I don't have. I have less fear. Less fear. Yeah. The thing is, once Bitcoin goes up and it doesn't come down, you're like, damn it. Shit. Well, guys. It's been a fun one. It's been a long one. Definitely. Well, I don't know where we talked about so many different things. Longer one, yeah. We talked about a handful of different things, right? Yep. Sure. We'll be back next week. We will be back next week. With more updates, more stuff. Yeah. After the Dane Kuhn upgrade yeah. for the testnet. And we'll hopefully have a date for the next uh, official upgrade. Yeah. We'll be here. If you see prices dip, we'll be buying more Bitcoin. As of right now, it's, it hasn't made a move. It hasn't decided. Yep. It's really like no idea what it wants to do. We appreciate you guys for listening this far and just being around and commenting. The and, liking and liking and liking subscribing and sharing and sharing because uh, sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. It shows your loved ones that you want them to have the best information and the most entertainment. So it's been another week of your favorite crypto podcast. Sometimes crypto. The unscripted crypto podcast. Oh. Thank <laughs> you.